Welcome back to another video in our quest to build the world's most modded Macintosh SE30. As I mentioned in last week's video, we have a pretty incredible and enormously rare upgrade coming here all the way from Germany. So rare, in fact, that I'm pretty sure many of you will have never heard of it. Now, I'm not going to spoil what that is, so you'll have to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel to find out. But last week, we upgraded the internals of this machine to make sure that we have enough power for all of these mods, plus that new upgrade. So this week, we're going to upgrade the appearance of this machine to match the wonders within. And we're doing it with the magic of Mac Effects. With this beautiful, brand new, injection molded, transparent blue case, to take the original black and blue aesthetic to an entirely new level. So stay tuned. Today's Macintosh shenanigans are brought to you by PCBWay. So many retro computing projects that we've come to depend on started with prototyping via PCBWay.com in no small part due to their great pricing and turnarounds as fast as 24 hours. Just take a look through their shared project sections where you can find absolute gems like this amazing entire Apple One clone. So if you have any PCB needs, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. The Mac Effects Clear Case project was born as a labor of love, stemming from a call for opinions on the idea on the venerable 68K MLA forums back in 2018. This blossomed into a successful Kickstarter, fully funded on May 12th, 2019, and hitting all of the goal levels, shipping out to backers in February 2020. And you can still buy these cases today. On the MacEffects.com website, they come in transparent red, green, blue, or clear. And oh man, are there a lot of cool modern parts for vintage Mac and Apple computers on the Mac Effects site. I'll put a link in the description below. Now, this wasn't cheap. The SE and SE30 case cost $350, which makes sense considering that this is a high quality, no expenses spared injection molded case aimed at being as perfect and beautiful as possible. So thank you to all of you who watch these videos and those of you who support the channel on Patreon for making this possible. And before I forget, a quick apology. In last week's video where we modded a modern 300 watt power supply into this SE30 to make sure we have enough juice for all of these mods, I mentioned that most of you had voted to paint the CD-ROM bezel blue, which is how it was when we originally found this machine on Craigslist. When I put out the poll on YouTube, I could have sworn that blue had just edged out black by a small margin. But it turns out, black beat blue at the end. So to all of you who voted, and you know, I was really on the fence about this. I was originally leaning on painting the whole thing black like that black Tempest SE30 from Watchmen. But in the end, I decided that I'm gonna keep it blue in respect to the original unknown modder who owned this machine before we did. And speaking of honoring the original vision for this machine, I've decided not to use the entire Mac Effects case. Instead, I'm only going to use the rear case so that we can admire all of the fancy new parts that we hacked in back there. For the front, I'm going to keep this original cracks and imperfections and all. But I'm going to try to make it look as nice as possible. So that means we're going to tear down this machine again, all the way this time, pop out this Apple logo, hit this with some sandpaper, and give it a few coats of high quality matte black plastic paint. And once again, we're doing this video as part of the Marchintosh event, which is where a whole lot of creators are creating vintage and classic Mac videos, even creators who don't normally create this kind of content. So that's pretty exciting. And I'll put a link in the description below so you can check out the rest of the Marchintosh stuff. And since we just had this machine running, I'm going to discharge the CRT. Okay, now we basically have to strip this thing completely down so I can take the CRT out of the case here and get this front case off so we can sand it down and paint it. So cue fast forward montage.
All right, so there we go, not too difficult. And we've got the front case plastics off. So now we should sand this down a bit and mask off the back a bit and uh, let's paint it. And we'll just make sure we pop out this Apple logo, of course, we don't want that to be black. And there is a teeny tiny little hole in the back here where you push to pop it out. Tiny Apple logo, safe and sound. All right, so I've just got a bit of 500 grit sandpaper here and I'm gonna give this a quick once over. And then we'll just wipe it down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. All right, we definitely got the top layer of the previous paint off of there. So I think we're ready to spray on the new stuff. And we're gonna be using this Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover Paint Plus Primer in Satin Canyon Black, which bonds to plastic. So here's my first attempt, and unfortunately, I went a little ham with the sandpaper, and you can kind of see the marks through this first coat of paint. So, especially around the screen here, I wanted to get it nice and smooth, but you can see, especially <laughs> right here in the middle, where I really went to town with the sandpaper to try to get some imperfections out. So I think what I'm gonna do is today, I'm gonna spend a lot of time sanding with a much finer grit sandpaper, and then give this another coat of paint, and then hopefully it will be nice and smooth. Well, I have made a terrible mistake in my quest to try to make this look as good as possible. I decided I would strip off all of the original paint and then sand it down nice and smooth and then repaint it with a very matte black paint that I got at the auto parts store. And unfortunately, what I chose to strip the paint off with was a gel that was basically rubbing alcohol in a suspension and it worked way too well. In fact, it actually ate into and melted the plastic, at least the top layer of the plastic, and turned it into this gummy stuff that kind of flaked off and now it's rehardening a bit. But yeah, it looks, uh, it looks a lot more cursed than it did before. So I think what we might have to do actually is when the case arrives from Mac Effects, we're gonna have to probably use that front case instead and make the whole thing translucent blue. Although I am going to try to save this with the Dremel and try to Dremel some of this off. But you know, I really wanna share both my successes and my failures with you here on this channel, even when those failures are my own dumb fault because I'm learning something and maybe you can learn something from my failures too and it's all part of the journey. Okay, so after many, many hours of dremeling and sanding and re-dremeling and re-sanding and scraping, this thing actually came out way better than I thought it could. And yeah, it's actually pretty cathartic sanding this thing down and really paying attention to the rounded corners and the edges and stuff. And I think I really got a lot of the imperfections out. And now I've painted it with a very matte black Krylon, actually meant for like hunting gear. I think it came out extremely well considering the state it was in after our little chemical mishap. And I think it still has a little bit of a ways to go. I think after I give this like seven days, which is recommended of drying time, I'm gonna re-sand this down with some fine grit sandpaper and give it another coat. Although maybe that's my too much gene kicking in. So <laughs> maybe I should leave well enough alone. And this is a, a pretty good cursed look, I think. So I'm gonna keep this front case and I'm really glad that I apparently saved it through many, many hours of hard work or penance as some might call it. And I've also replaced the fan inside the upgraded power supply with a Noctua that I modified a little bit to fit in there. And unfortunately, the clear case still has not arrived. It is now Friday, the day before I'm gonna post this video and I've given it the whole week to show up. Originally it was supposed to arrive on Monday, but now 
Unfortunately, the tracking information has completely stopped and they've removed the estimated delivery day from tracking. So I really hope that's not lost in the mail because it wasn't cheap and I'm really excited to put it on this cursed Mac. But I did finally get my super secret, super special package in from Germany with an extraordinarily rare upgrade for the SE30. So I think in our next video, since we don't have the cool case figured out yet, we will finally explore this thing, get this installed, and tell you the extremely interesting story behind it. And since we have this all the way apart like this, the other thing I really want to figure out is a better way to mount all of these drives back here without just sticky taping them to one another, which is definitely not very professional. And the original modder had the CD-ROM drive screwed into the bottom of the case, which we can still do. And you can still see the screw holes, like he widened a hole here. And uh, I think it was screwed into this hole as well. But it's kind of hard to do that when the motherboard is installed. And if you put the CD-ROM drive in before the motherboard, then it's very hard to connect the power cable here to the motherboard underneath because the CD-ROM drive comes up to about here. So you only have that tiny little gap to work with and that cable is not very long. So ideally I wanna figure out a way to put the motherboard in first and connect it and then put the CD-ROM drive in and be able to screw it in place. So what I have are a couple different kinds of brackets that were really meant for like hanging shelves and, you know, fixing furniture and stuff. And I was really hoping that some of these would work. And my first thought was to put these guys down because they actually line up quite well with the screw holes on the side of the drive here. So I could put a screw in here and put the drive down. Yeah, th and then I'd be able to mount it like that and have four of these things in there and have actual drive mounts on the side. But as it turns out, it makes the front of the CD-ROM drive just like a millimeter too high. So they're just a little bit too thick. So I found these things, which are ever so slightly smaller but they're not really a millimeter smaller. So unfortunately, this long one doesn't work either. And none of them really line up with holes on the bottom of the case. So I'd have to basically drill new holes to screw these in place. And uh, yeah, I'm not averse to doing that. I had to do that for the speaker already, but it is kind of a pain. But, <laughs> you know, we can't be lucky every time with holes magically lining up. So I think what I'm going to do is mount these just in the back and then it'll still angle the front of the drive down enough where it'll sit flush from the front. So we'll just have it connected in two spots. And then the other thing I want to do is mount this more securely to the CD-ROM which I should be able to do with these long fellows right here. Basically all I'm gonna do is bridge from this screw hole to this screw hole and this screw hole to this screw hole and that should hold it in place pretty well. All right, there we go. A homemade minimalist drive caddy made of just these two nice shiny bits of metal. And yeah, this drive is not going anywhere. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then I can add this other one here to hold the SCSI to SD in place. And yeah, it's almost like it's from the factory. And hopefully that's still enough room for the uh, CRT to get past this hump here. If not, I'll just have to move it and maybe remove the bracket entirely and just stick the PCB down directly. But <laughs> yeah, much better than the double-sided tape solution. Nope, it does not clear the front. So I have to think of something else. And some people have actually suggested that I replace the jazz drive with the SCSI to SD, 
because it would fit quite nicely in that spot because it's black and the machine is black, but I don't know. I'm kind of partial to having such a ridiculous drive as a jazz drive crammed into this cursed Mac, and you know, that's what it came with, so I wouldn't want to remove that defining feature of this weird machine. But let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think we should replace the jazz drive with the SCSI to SD, or do you think we should have all three in this machine? All right, so what I did was I put a little bit of super glue on the bottom of these tabs and then lined up the CD-ROM drive as perfectly as I could at the front of the machine and then let it sit for like two hours. So they stayed on and uh, they're pretty easy to break off. In fact, this one broke off already. But yeah, uh, I just took a bit of Sharpie and made a mark here and here to drill. And yeah, we'll make our new metal fastened in place disk drive caddy. All right, our two brackets are nice and stable, and our CD-ROM and jazz drive combo now slot in really nicely. There we go, just like it was factory. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh shenanigans like this, including that crazy upgrade, make sure you're subscribed down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Spike, Connor, Justin, Greg from Ruck K Mods, Chris, and Sorta Eclectic, and all of my Patreon supporters for helping make these shenanigans possible.